During aging, the de novo NAD synthesis pathway is dysfunctional, and that's what we'll see here. So first, we know that NAD levels decline during aging, and so do tryptophan levels. So that at least suggests there's an attempted increased flux through the de novo NAD synthesis pathway. In support of that, kynurenine levels increase during aging, so more tryptophan is converted into kynurenine. Similarly, quinolinic acid levels increase during aging, and that quinolinic acid levels increase, but NAD levels decrease during aging. That suggests that there's an age-related block, potentially, in the conversion of quinolinic acid into NAD. So let's take a deeper look at that pathway. And that's what we can see here. So quinolinic acid is converted by QA, quinolinic acid phosphoribosyl transferase, QAPRT, into NAMN, and then after two more enzymatic steps is converted into NAD. Now there's probably a dysfunctional QAPRT, it's probably dysfunctional during aging, and I'll explain more in, and explain why in a second. Now, fortunately, there are backup pathways for increasing NAD. First, the price handler pathway, which nicotinic acid, NA, is converted also into NAMN, and then those same two enzymatic steps, uh, nicotinic acid would then be converted into NAD. Now, personally, I've had a big bump in NAD levels, more than doubling using nicotinic acid, but I've yet to have success through the de novo NAD synthesis pathway, which further implicates QAPRT as potentially being dysfunctional, at least in my case. Now, in addition to the price handler pathway, there's also the salvage pathway, including NAM, niacinamide, NMN, and NR, which are also converted into NAD. However, taking these precursors, nicotinic acid, nicotinamide, NAM, NMN, or NR, doesn't address the age-related problem with the de novo NAD synthesis pathway. So with that in mind, can we increase QAPRT activity, thereby increasing NAD? And this will be my second attempt at that, or my second hypothesis in that realm, the first being grapeseed proanthocyanidins, which failed. So let's see what the most recent hypothesis is. And that involves clofibrate, which increases QPRT activity. QPRT being quinolinate phosphoribosyl transferase, the same as QAPRT. Now, for a quick intro onto clofibrate, it's a lipid-lowering drug. So the importance of clofibrate is that we can see that it increases QPRT, act QPRT activity. And this is a study done in rats that were fed 0.25% clofibrate in their diet for two weeks controls who were not fed this clofibrate in white, and then the clofibrate-treated rats are in the shaded uh, gray, gray bar. And there we can see there's an approximate doubling of QPRT activity, this is in liver, in rats that were fed clofibrate. Now more importantly, liver levels of NAD increased in rats that were fed clofibrate, and that's what we can see here with the, that approximate doubling of liver levels of NAD. So with that in mind, should I use clofibrate to try to increase NAD? So I have a different plan, and one reason for that is because my approach tries to focus almost exclusively on whole foods. I try to stay away from prescribed medications and supplements as much as physically possible. So with that in mind, clofibrate is a known activator of PPAR-alpha, which is peroxisome proliferator activated receptor alpha. Now, can other PPAR-alpha activators be used to increase NAD, and potentially maybe even more safely, as it's maybe there aren't there are ways to increase it without having to use a prescribed medication. So if so, which ones? So to address that, let's take a deeper look at PPAR-alpha's location and function in the cell. So it's right there, PPAR-alpha in, in the center of the nucleus. And then PPAR-alpha activation induces gene expression. And for a short list, we can see that here highlighted by that box. And just to highlight one of them, we can see that PPAR-alpha activation increases levels of FGF21. Now the importance of that gene or protein is that FGF21 overexpression increases lifespan, at least in mice. And if you missed that video, it'll be right there in the right corner. Now note that PPAR-alpha also activates QPRT, which isn't on this list. So in terms of PPAR-alpha activators, they include fibrates, which clofibrate is in that class, but also a compound known as WY14643. And we can see that here, as these are ligands or activators of PPAR-alpha. And just to highlight their ability to uh, impact PPAR-alpha activation, that's what we'll see here. So on the bottom, on the y-axis, we've got three different compounds, WY14643, and then two different uh, fibrates, ciprofibrate and clofibrate. 
Now note that clofibrate is indeed a PPAR alpha activator as shown here with a 16-fold activation in the presence of clofibrate. So once again, we can see that PPAR alpha activation, especially by clofibrate, may be a mechanism for impacting NAD. Now even better is ciprofibrate, which has about a 21-fold increased activity or increased activation of PPAR alpha. But the best of this bunch is WI14643. We can see a 26-fold induction of PPAR alpha activation. But there are also other things that can activate PPAR alpha, and we can go away from these prescribed medications, including polyunsaturated fatty acids, or PUFA, which activate PPAR alpha. And we can see that there, as PUFAs are ligands and activators of, again, PPAR alpha. And we can get them from the diet. So can including more PUFAs in the diet increase PPAR alpha activity, thereby resulting in higher NAD? If so, which polyunsaturated fatty acids? So to address that, we'll see this data here, first on the left on the y-axis, starting with PPAR alpha activation. And then we've got the gold standard, WY14643. Again, in this study, it was 25-fold induced. In, uh, so WY14643 induced PPAR alpha activity 25-fold. All right, so what about the polyunsaturated fatty acids? So we can see that there's a group of four that had pretty decent PPAR alpha activation with the best of the bunch being alpha-linolenic acid with about a 15-fold induction of PPAR alpha activation. And note that this is an in vitro study. This is done in cells. Whether these data would be true in people is yet to be determined, but I'm, I'm going to do that experiment and we'll find out. Now, alpha-linolenic acid then raises the question, if I eat more of it, can that increase uh, NAD? And alpha-linolenic acid, or ALA, Foods that are rich in that fatty acid are flax seeds and chia. So I already have flax seeds in my diet. It's a relatively easy jump to include more to further increase alpha-linolenic alpha acid intake as a means to potentially increase NAD. But that's not the only PUFA that can increase PPAR alpha activation. You can see that there are three others that aren't as good, but still relatively good in the 10 to 12-fold uh, PPAR alpha activation range, including linoleic, gamma-linolenic, and arachidonic. Interestingly, in contrast, note that there was no or weak PPAR alpha activation for saturated fatty acids, or SFAs, including medium and, uh, or sh rel relatively short and medium chain saturated fatty acids going from C8 to C14 for the carbon chain length. Now, I get the majority of those fatty acids in my diet from daily coconut butter, so it's a relatively easy switch to reduce that by a little bit and increase ALA. But also note that C16, or stearic acid, didn't really much have an impact on PPAR alpha activation either. And I get a pretty decent amount of that from cocoa beans. So for me, I'm going to cut those down by a little bit, not eliminate, and then further increase ALA to test this hypothesis. But these aren't the only polyunsaturated fatty acids that activate PPAR alpha. Fish oil fatty acids, including EPA and DHA, also activate PPAR alpha. And that's what we'll see here. And once again, this also is an in vitro study that was done in cells. So one, whether this data would be true in people, there's no way to know without testing. So again, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm aiming to do is to directly test this by measuring NAD and first increasing these PUFA levels in my diet. So at the top, we've got percent PPAR alpha activation. And then when these cells were not induced, just basal levels of PPAR alpha activity, it was 21% activated. But then for each 50 micromolar increase of each of the compounds that I'm going to show, PPAR alpha, the percentage of PPAR alpha activation was evaluated. And first, that gold standard for activating PPAR alpha, WY14643, we can see that there was a nearly five-fold increase in PPAR alpha activation, 99% PPAR alpha activation. But what about the polyunsaturated fatty acids? So first, starting with the same or some of the three that were in the image on the left, linolenic acid, linoleic, and arachidonic, we can see that these are pretty good in a head-to-head -head matchup with the gold standard for inducing PPAR alpha activity, WY14643, as those three PUFAs also activated it to 100% or more. In other words, a five-fold activation over non-induced uh, cells that didn't have PPAR alpha activators. But then what about the fish oil fatty acids, EPA and DHA? So first, EPA may not be the best of the bunch because we can see that its PPAR alpha activation was 92%. But still, that's a, about a four and a half fold increase over basal levels. So still a pretty good increase in PPAR alpha activity. But the best of the bunch is DHA. And we can see that that's about a seven fold increase 
above non-induced uh, cells that didn't have PPAR alpha activators, and even better than that gold standard for activating P, uh, PPAR alpha, WY14643. Now, to further illustrate the importance of these polyunsaturated fatty acids as a potential means for activating PPAR alpha and increasing NAD, levels, their levels, circulating levels, decline during aging. And that's what we can see here. So we've got four of those fatty acids, DHA, EPA, linolenate, which could be the alpha or gamma, and arachidonate. And then there's circulating levels in 67-year-olds, in 97-year-olds, and then whether there were significant differences between the groups, p-value, and the false discovery rate, FDR. So we can see for each of these four polyunsaturated fatty acids, they were higher in the younger group when compared with the older group, and significantly higher as the p-value and FDR are both below 0.05. So that then raises the question and hypothesis. If I eat more fish and or fish oil, in addition to alpha linolenic acid, can I further activate PPAR alpha and increase NAD? And to test that, I'm going to send an NAD sample or a blood sample to Genfinity, who does the NAD analysis sometime in September of 2023. So uh, sorry, so stay tuned for that data in a future video. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NED quantification, epigenetic and telomere testing, oral microbiome composition, green tea, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health. Note that their panel is almost exclusively different from Iolo's kit, including APOB, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. All these links will be in the video's description. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, this link and all of the other links, again, will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.